Hey folks, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a continuous integration pipeline for a Node.js and a Java application for a real life project using the modern approach. Let's have a look at what you're going to learn. You will begin by learning how to create a CI pipeline for a Java application using a three step approach. You learn how to set up Jenkins along with Docker about the modern application, the use case. You will actually set up the Jenkins using Docker, install the plugins, have all the basic configurations done, then learn about the declarative syntax to write the Jenkins file, write the actual code and create that pipeline using the modern Blue Ocean UI, edit that pipeline using the Blue Ocean, integrate with the Git based workflows, integrate with Docker as agents, and then finally automate the Docker and container image build and publish job from Jenkins. And that's going to be a modern continuous integration pipeline integrated with two different applications. Well, if you find that interesting, I'm going to take you to my live stream. This is from a 90 day DevOps challenge, and you can attend these kind of challenge along with courses, coaching, community support by being a school of DevOps member as well. Without further ado, let's get started with the live stream where I'm showing you the detailed step-by-step -step approach to create the modern continuous integration. Let's begin. So let's get started with today's session and uh, welcome. And I've been, I'm going to show you how to build a continuous integration pipeline for Node.js and Java application, starting with the Java application for which uh, a continuous integration pipeline is more or less like we want to set up a feedback cycle, a feedback loop so that whenever you make changes to the code, we get immediate feedback and continuous feedback and automated feedback. And that's where we need a platform like Jenkins. Jenkins is the number one platform. If you look at uh, uh, the continuous integration space, that's the most in demand even in the job market. And uh, that's what we're going to get started with. And Jenkins has been, uh, you know, uh, has you know reinvented itself. It has more, you know, modernized itself and it has done that multiple times. So what we see as Jenkins today and what we saw, uh, what we had uh, 10 year, 10 years earlier is completely different in a lot of different aspects, uh, even the foundations are same. When we say continuous integration pipeline, let's just say we take one of the applications to begin with, and I'm gonna show you for two. So it's a combined pipeline that we're gonna create at the end of the day. That's why you see, uh, when I showed you that pipeline, you see multiple stages because this is for two different applications. One is the voting application, second is the front end application. And uh, how do we go about setting up that pipeline is what I will show you step by step here. Now, what are we talking about when we say continuous integration pipeline? Let's take this Spring Boot Java based service. Now, what we want to do here is every time the code, uh, you know, you make changes to the code, let's say you commit it to the Git repository from there. You want to run build test and package jobs. Typically those are the jobs you have in CI pipeline. You can add or remove, uh, add more jobs or remove some, but, uh, we'll start with a simple three stage pipeline with build test and package. <coughs> this is a Java application, uh, written with spring boot framework uses Maven as a build tool. So if you look at the stages for each stage, we'll have some Maven command to run like Maven compile, Maven test and Maven package. Later on, when we go to the Node.js application, the commands would change to something like npm start, npm test. There may not be a package job for the node because we may not want to package that as a uh, zip file or something. We may want to just package it as a container image later. So we'll also create a container image build stage and add it once we are done with this initial version of the pipeline. So this is the first iteration. Let's create build test and package pipeline. And for this, we need Jenkins setup. And to set up Jenkins, I'm going to use Docker. That's the quickest way, easy, quick way to set it up. And the setup that we're going to do is very special. This is typically available as part of. So, uh, so how I'm going to set this up and demonstrate this is using Docker. So I'll create two containers, one running Jenkins, another will act as a Docker server. So this is a Docker itself, but it like, acts like a Docker instance. And for this, to make this work, we, I will use a software called as DIND, Docker inside Docker. So it's like a special software. And that way you have an isolated small environment to test or to run your jobs with and when to integrate uh, Jenkins with Docker, this setup is already ready. 
So how do I go about launching this setup is using a Docker Compose script. And that script looks like this. So Docker Compose script, if you look at this, there is one container which will act as a Docker server. There is another container which acts like a Jenkins server. And then they talk to each other, they share some files and configurations so that Jenkins can connect, connect to Docker. So all of that is configured, pre-configured. There are volumes so that all the configurations, jobs are stored and are available, you know, let's say uh, later as well. Okay, um, just one request is don't send the private question, just whatever questions you have, you uh, ask it directly in the room, Dipendra. And uh, um, about the links and so on, you can easily find it from the video recordings. And Rahul has a question about, uh, all right. So I'll take the questions a little later, okay? So um, you can start posting the questions in the chat uh, or you have a QA and a section, you can start doing that there. I'll come to the questions a little later. Now, Jenkins Essential course on our platform, that is schooloftowers.com, already has the setup part, right? So how do you set this up? The script, the labs, the projects, everything is already there. How do you create the pipelines? How do you write Jenkins file as a code? Uh, how do you dive, deep dive into that? How do you integrate with the Git-based workflows? Uh, this is the latest course that I created and published just a week ago. And uh, it has uh, pretty much everything that you need to get started with Jenkins and master it, uh, building continuous integration pipeline. So assuming that you have looked at it, and this is something I had provided uh, as a pre-course uh, for this session. So those of you who have gone through it will definitely benefit. If not, you can also go through it later and come back and watch this video. You will benefit uh, even better, even more. Okay, now, uh, so let me start setting up this environment. It's as good as saying Docker Compose build because this builds a custom image for Jenkins with some plugins installed. Like it, it will install Docker Workflow plugin, Blue Ocean plugin. Blue Ocean is the one which gives you this nice looking UI. The nice looking UI that you see here is called as Blue Ocean. This has been created specifically for pipeline. And that is why I say Jenkins has modernized itself multiple times over. And this is the modern avatar of Jenkins with uh, the pipeline as you know, that you can see here, the, the way you can visualize the pipeline, build the pipelines. And I'll give you the short co shortest path to create as well as to modify the pipeline. So how do you go about doing that? I will uh, share that with you, right? Now this is uh, uh, right now you can see it is building the container image for um, Jenkins. And then it would go ahead and see it's installing the plugins necessary. So if you have Docker and Docker Compose, and if you run this script, it's just gonna set up everything for you very quickly. It'll have everything that you need to set up this pipeline that I'm demonstrating, and it will integrate with Docker. So when I say I'm gonna integrate with Docker later, the setup is already there. That's what I'm creating right now, right? So that's uh, the script doing. And uh, this is all, you know, uh, code. So you just have to clone it from a repository like this, UDBC Bootcamp. Let me share this with you on the chat. So those of you who want to try it, you can. And uh, there is this Craftista application. This is the repository, the original repository, the upstream, I'll share that with you, which you can clone and try it out as well. Uh, what I would say is go and check the recording later and then try this out yourself as well. So I'm sharing that uh, with you. So who, if you want to try, try it out, feel free to do so. All right, and uh, uh, the code that I would be, uh, I'm using right now is here. I believe I have shared that already. And you go to Jenkins directory here, you have the Docker Compose file and you run Docker Compose build, Docker Compose up hyphen D, off you go, you'll have an environment set up. Right, so it's just installing everything. It may take some time, uh, it may, Probably it may be waiting for some, you know, something to come up or, you know, things like that, right? So that's probably the reason why it's taking a little longer. So I'll give it a moment to have uh, this container built. It's been more than three minutes now. And uh, once this is ready, uh, I will start demonstrating how uh, to generate the pipeline. Or while this is happening, 
uh, let me show you how I would create a pipeline for uh, this application, the continuous integration pipeline. Now, what is also very interesting about this application is this application is made up of multiple services. This is a mono repository. What does that mean is this is one single repository for multiple services, including catalog, which is a Python application, front end, which is a Node.js application, voting, which is a Java application. Now, it gets a little tricky here because when you use a Jenkins file, should you create a Jenkins file for every service and then run it specifically or should you create one single Jenkins file? I'm going to follow an approach where I will create one single Jenkins file and later on when I integrate image building, etc. I already have Docker file for voting application. That's my Java app. And there is a file for front end application, which is Node.js application. I will also integrate the image build so that it reads this Docker file, uh, builds the pa you know packaging job, uh, image job, and publishes it to the registry as well. So that is something I'm going to uh, do as well. Okay, so since this is taking a little while, uh, what I'm going to try and do is use an alternative host to set this up where I have, uh, you know, let's say this image already been built. Or uh, let me give this one more try. Using Docker image build again. And it's going to install the plugins and pro progress from there. Hopefully it works now. Uh, while I'm doing that, Let me just prepare my alternative environment as well. I'm just resetting the environment, so I will clean up everything, including some volumes which get created. And then let's assume that uh, I have the script ready. I have built the image using Docker Compose build. And then I would just say Docker Compose, Compose up hyphen D, which would set up Jenkins, which would set up Docker for me. And I can access this here. So I'm showing you everything from scratch, right? From setting up Jenkins, which should come up and uh, it will ask me for an admin password. So Jenkins initially generates an admin password, which is in the logs. I'm checking the logs for Jenkins so that it gives me that admin password, which is here. And then I paste it in here. So if you want to configure Jenkins, it's a four or five step process. First, you provide the password. Second, you provide uh, or install the plugins. And in this case, I would recommend you just say install suggested plugins. Double click, start installing, it may take a few minutes and then uh, it will take you to the next configuration where you create the users and then a uh, few additional things and then you start using it. You can see that it is installing all the essential plugins including Git, SSH, Pipeline, Gradle and uh, Maven and stuff like that. Username and password I'm creating an admin user here with my super secret password. Yep. And then this can be anything. It doesn't validate it. That's it. So I have Jenkins ready. It asks me to restart because it needs some plugins to be set up properly. That's what it looks like. And uh, once this is ready, I uh, should be able to start creating the jobs and the pipelines and so on. Now I'm not going to create jobs manually. I'm going to write the pipeline as a code. The pipeline as a code looks like this. This is how you write a Jenkins file. Just like how we do everything as a code in DevOps, I would start writing the pipeline as a code right away. If you want to understand how to create the job step by step, uh, you can check that in this course where I have a section on building the pipelines manually, creating the job step by step, connecting them together, creating a pipeline and so on. What we want to focus on for today's session, and this is more like a project, right? So I'm demonstrating how to do a project. 
So I'm assuming that you have some uh, background on Jenkins and creating the jobs. If not, you can check out the course. But here, I'm just showing you how to actually build the product from scratch given this code. And to do that, uh, I will create a pipeline like this. I want to show you how pipeline looks like. And this is a declarative syntax of a Jenkins pipeline. There are two syntaxes. One is a declarative syntax, which is the easier abstracted syntax. Like you write Ansible code, like you write Kubernetes manifest, like you write Terraform HCL code. Uh, this is a scripted uh, declarative syntax. A scripted syntax, which is a previous version, will show you a lot of groovy code. And you can identify scripted versus declarative by using the presence of a node block versus a pipeline block. If you see node block, that's a scripted pipeline. If you see pipeline instead, it is definitely a declarative pipeline. And in a scripted pipeline, declarative pipeline will read like an English language code. I mean, with some structure, of course. Uh, scripted pipeline, on the other hand, is a lot of code. You'll see logic, conditionals, if else statements, uh, try catch, and whatnot. This is like a typical programming language. Now, what we use is a simpler version, easier version, and the modern version. That is a declarative pipeline, which looks like this. I'll break down this code for you. And I have a formula that I use called as P-A-T-S cube P to understand this syntax. Let me explain. So this is, this is the same file. How do you break it down is we start with this formula P-A-T, S cube and P. What does it mean? P stands for the pipeline block. Declarative pipeline starts with pipeline always. Next is the agent, because when you define your pipeline, you have to define where you're going to run it, which node are you going to use, run it with Docker, are you going to run it on Kubernetes, all of these are types of agents, agent configuration, you can see it in the pipeline syntax again. What kind of agents are available, agent can be any, as in any node in the cluster, you may have multiple nodes in Jenkins cluster environment as well. Uh, it can be none. We'll have a specific reason to use it. We'll talk about it later uh, in this session. Label is if you have labeled the nodes, like you have four or five nodes in a Jenkins environment, you can label them and say, I want to run it on this particular type of a node or label and so on. You can use Docker as an agent. You can use Kubernetes as an agent. Uh, so there are different types of agents to decide where to run your job. Then comes the tools because you can define the global tools. Uh, the tools section is here. This is where you have the tools. And tools is where you want to build it with Maven. You want to build it with, uh, you know, uh, Node.js. You can define that as a global tool and use it in your pipeline as well. If you use Docker, this is not needed. Uh, I'll start with a simple pipeline. Later on, I'll convert it into a Docker-based one. And then comes the S cube. S cube stands for the stages. So when you create the pipeline jobs, your jobs will look like this. So you're going to have jobs like, oh, I have a, a build test package, right? So that's three different jobs that you create. And uh, uh, these jobs, build, test, and package, get converted into each stages. Each, each of these three stages are the build, test, and package, essentially. So that's what it is going to look like. So the stage number one will be uh, build, stage number two will be test, stage number three will be package, and so on. What does each stage have? So to encompass all the stages, stage one, two, three, you have the stages block. And within each of the stage, whatever your build instructions are, whatever you want to do before the build, after the build, all of that forms a step. Step such as this echo, like we are printing something, we are building something, we are sleeping. So whatever you want to do, whatever action you want to take, even if it is a sleep, uh, that's an action, you can add that as a step. And then the last P stands for, the last P here stands for the post actions. So after the build is done, what do you want to do? You want to send out an email, you want to archive the artifacts. And based on certain condition, oh, if this succeeds, you do this. If it fails, you do this. You can have those kind of conditionals in the post actions as well, right? That's how you can write uh, uh, those, basically, uh, that configuration. Now, let's come to the 
uh, Jenkins file and let me show you, see if my Jenkins is ready. Should be ready by now. It's restarted. And I'll just log into it and keep it available. Now this job for the Java or a Maven application, I am going to use a global tool that would be a tool configuration that is Maven because I have to build it with Maven. So what do I need to do before even I use the create a pipeline? I'm going to go to manage Jenkins tools section. And here I have to add, I'm going to add Maven. So that's what you will do. So Maven here, and this will select a specific, allow you to select a specific version of Maven for your job. You can have multiple instances of Maven available on your system. <clears throat> I'm just defining very specifically what version of Maven that I have. This is the reference that I have for this Maven installation. I'm going to use this in my pipeline. So Maven 396 is my reference. I have copied this as well and I will show you by writing a pipeline for this, for this application. And then it's not just one service voting that we're going to write. We'll start with voting, but later on add support for front end, maybe catalog, maybe recommendations. It will, you know, iterate over uh, that. So first thing that I'm going to do is uh, uh, this is my own fork. I have forked it already. This is my own fork here. I'm going to start adding a code. Uh, I'll create a Jenkins file and I'll start writing it from scratch for one job. I'll show you a very simple approach, right? So initially you start with, you can actually start with a scaffold like this, but I'll show you from scratch the first part, right? So that uh, you see it being done iteratively. But once you are familiar, just use the scaffold, get started, then iterate over it using UI, which is much simpler. So I'll show you a very simple approach to do that. So PAT3 SQP, that's what I'm going to use as a formula. P is the pipeline. Start with that. A is agent. T is tools, right? Agent configuration. I have tools configuration. I'm going to have stages. And there will be a post action. Yeah, so starts with my P, A, T, S, and P. Two more S's will be one stage that I begin with, with the name of the stage. And then within that, I can have one or more steps. As simple as that, that's my P, A, T, S cube, P formula. Uh, this is my pipeline. What is my agent? Agent is, uh, I don't have any elaborate configuration for agent, so I just say agent any. You can check the syntax. I'm going to reference the syntax so that you will also get an idea about it. Agent any, that's how you typically begin, right? The tools section. Tools section, I'm going to add a Maven tool, Maven, and the name that I used in the global tools. So if I want to add tools, I'll go here and say Maven, just like this, Maven. And inside the quotes, I will add uh, the tool configuration as in, whatever I have on my system in the tools section that I've already defined. Maven installation, Maven 396, this exact same thing goes in here, simple. And then my build stage. So I want to create a pipeline with multiple stages, right? Three different stages I will be using. Build test package. I'm getting started with just build. How to add this? I'll make it very simple for you. So steps here, I want to add two steps. One, I'll just echo something saying, this is my build stage for voting application. So voting build. Because later on, I'll add build step for uh, front end application and catalog and other services as well. So right now I'm just, uh, you know, naming it as voting build. Adding an echo step. And then when I run a compile, I'll have, I'll have to run something like this. Maven compile. 
the only caveat here is since this code if you look, look at it it's like this structured like this so jenkins file is in here but my application is in a subdirectory called as voting so if i just say maven compile it will start running from the root path i don't want that i want to run it from a subdirectory to do that i'll have to add some directive and put it in a directory block somewhere and uh, i'll look up in the pipeline steps reference there is something called as pipeline step reference sharing that with you and there is a pipeline syntax both things are useful when you're writing this pipeline as a code in this case i want to check what is there for directory there's a dir block change directory block i can use the directory block so directory block uh, should look like this it, there is no example of it so i'll just create it anyways so directory block will look like this and then i provide the path that is voting from inside voting directory it should run uh, whatever it needs to so this is for closing the directory block right so i want to use maven compile I want to build it with this stage uh, this is my stages one stage and you know one step here two steps here one just print something and maven compile is the actual step and then post actions again i will just add uh, something some message just for the sake of it right now and then i can also define when so always irrespective of the outcome that is you can also write it as on failure on success uh, so there are these conditionals that you can add for post actions as well so you can see that here post action has always changed fixed and aborted whatever you want here i'm using always just run it always irrespective of the outcome that's what i'm saying here okay so this is my initial version of the pipeline code jenkins file that is let me go ahead and uh, commit this first this is my own repository or a fork this is where my jenkins file is and when you create a jenkins file make sure you create a file name with jenkins file j capital j should be in capitals once you have this code now i will go to jenkins and start pointing to this and it will scan it and i'm setting up a two-way integration between jenkins and github so that not only jenkins pulls the code and the changes it also sends the commit uh, you know status back what that means is right now you see i have these many commits this is my code if i look at the history i see the commit history sure but it doesn't have any status received from jenkins how do you get that so that you don't even have to go outside your code base you'll see your status oh whether my ci pipeline has been triggered or not whether it is succeeded or not so you can get all of that status right here so how do you go about doing that is uh, what i'm demonstrating so this is where we bring in the blue ocean which is a plugin for jenkins but it gives you that modern ui which is built for the pipelines so i go to the pipe blue ocean and then from here i am going to say a uh, new pipeline this is where it asks me to connect with github and it needs a special token for that when i click on github it says create a token if you are logged in to github this is easy so you just say create and it goes to the right github page i'll have to authenticate first using a two factor and from here i'll say all right so create a token it has all the uh, configuration and access that it requires configured already and uh, all the authorizations are there so you just keep it till i'll tell you when uh, this page because you'll have to use it twice one is right here to connect and now it is connected to github it starts scanning my github account 
and then I can choose my own repository, which is the craft tester. This is the fork that I've just created. And when I say create pipeline, it looks up the Jenkins file in every single branch available and creates a pipeline automatically. So just done that, scanned it, started the pipeline. Now, this is where I'll have to provide additional configuration because I want to set up a two-way integration. That's one. Secondly, GitHub put some throttle. If you don't provide your GitHub credentials, the API usage is limited. Okay. So what I do here is go to this classic UI, click on the gear icon here, takes me to the configuration for the same pipeline. And here I need to add my GitHub credential. That's why I said you keep the token till I tell you because the same token is what I copy. Come back to Jenkins, add it as credentials. So select the credentials, username. This is my GitHub user ID and the token. That's the password. ID can be anything. And you select the token, that's one configuration. Secondly, I want Jenkins to keep polling GitHub because GitHub cannot send a webhook to Jenkins if it is private. Most of you, it's gonna be private. So I'm just demonstrating accordingly. So I go to scan repository trigger and say, oh, check periodically. So go and check the repository periodically. I'm just setting up a smaller interval, one minute, because we want to see immediately, we are in the world of Instagram, and you know fast attention so we as soon as we do something we'll have to see it right especially when we're learning it's important yes so we uh, set the interval to lower and it scans the jenkins file it finds it and start creating the jobs accordingly there might be an existing job running so i may have to stop that first this needs to be stopped first so that it runs a new one I can also do it from here. So this progress I'll stop. Yeah. And uh, looks like it has created a new run or not. I'll trigger one more. This is a classic QI. This is the blue ocean. You can use both. And you see the second run has triggered. And this is the pipeline view. And you can see it started building running the maven compile using the global tool configuration that i already had and uh, it starts building that yeah the first job is done now this is how the jenkins file look like this is my jenkins file secondly you will see there is a two-way integration i talked about so if i go back to the commit history i do see the uh, outcome of my job right here and when it starts there'll be an orange dot so that it knows that, oh, as soon as I commit, uh, it starts start building a pipeline and it starts sending a status saying that, hey, uh, wait for my inputs, I'm running a job for you, right? So, and then it will turn to green tick or red cross based on the status outcome, simple. Now, this is there. Uh, the Jenkins file is also looks like this, right? So this is the beginning. We just have one job created. Now, how do I create a more sophisticated pipeline with test job, package job, and so on? One way you may think that, hey, why don't I go and keep on adding the code here? You can do that, of course, right? That's always an option. But I'll give you a simpler solution and simpler option. And this will be kind of very easy. Uh, it'll be mind-blowing as well uh, for some of you. Because what you can do is you can edit it right from... Uh, Jenkins this job right and how do you do that is very simple just go to the editor go to one of the runs not the pipeline but go to one of the runs and select the edit mark here the pencil mark and start adding the jobs simple as that so I have vote, voting build and then I say test job and then I add a step you can add the steps right from here the shell script like but it has to be run from a directory so there is a specific uh, step called a change current directory and then I say this is my directory so that it does what I have here this directory voting and within that I want to run this 
so i would first create the direct switch the directory and then in the child steps i'll say run a shell script that's how i run maven uh not maven uh, yeah maven compile on maven test here or i can say maven clean test so that it cl cleans up the environment every time that's it repeat that for voting package change current directory how many think this is cool you can type in one if you do or if you don't uh, you can type in zero maven package minus d skip test and what is interesting is not only this but also i can save it and uh, let me do one more thing i want to archive the artifacts after this is done typically we want to generate an artifact which is a jar file so i add one more step saying archive the artifacts I would highly recommend you looking at this course because if you want to understand all of these steps, step by step, in details, that's where the course comes in. But artifacts archival is uh, where I say, okay, in this directory, find target star dot jar because that is where it generates the jar file and puts it, and that's what I have here. Uh, and what is cool about all of this is even cooler thing is when I save it, see what happens now. I add the commit message saying added test and package jobs. So it is as easy as that. You don't have to be a coding expert. You don't have to be a programmer. You don't have to even know this. Whatever I've written here, you don't even have to know this because just use a scaffold, get started writing a pipeline, and then edit it using UI. How simple is that? can't get simpler than that and what happened here is when I submitted that it not only started running a job which you see now you'll see unfolded uh, but also it has committed that change back into my repository that's when when I saved this is what happened so I have a pipeline edited and it is running right this is what Jenkins, this is when I say the modern version of the continuous integration pipeline, right? That's what it is. Cool. So this is freaking cool. So I, I, you know, when I saw this feature, I fell in love with, you know, the whole concept of pipeline and Jenkins all together. And uh, that's what I wanted to br br bring to you, basically. And we're getting started. We're going to add a lot more cooler things from now on. So this is the pipeline for uh, initial pipeline that I wanted to set up uh, and this is exactly same as uh, what you see here uh, this is what we have now the next thing that I want to do is iterate over it and uh, start also adding the best practices like when we say we have integrated with github let's add some best practices which we've talked about earlier in the last session about gitofy setting up the branching models uh, so if you haven't attended that session go back and look at the recording as well so what we want to do is set up this best practices including we want to lock down the main branch this main branch you want to lock it down we want to allow changes only via pull request and via branches so how does that work you create branches you make commits there and then you bring the changes in using the pull requests request to merge that is a pull request and this is where we add continuous integration inputs this is where we can add code reviews as well we'll not not add it for the time's sake right now but i have shown you that entire workflow with trunk based development model last week and then we allow it to merge so that the idea about this is whenever the code gets into the main line we have a guarantee that build never breaks because we have tested it here for every single branch we will have a new pipeline so that's even cooler so you'll see how this works right so for every single branch, there is going to be uh, a new pipeline because that's how this pipeline uh, works. 
you see this is not a simple pipeline this is called as a multi branch pipeline it is going to scan if you look at the scan repository log it is already scanning the repository for all the branches which have jenkins file it's going to create a pipeline on the fly and when you delete the branch the pipeline will also go away so it's quite mind blowing if you look at this so it's not a simple uh, pipeline that we are creating here right just like that it's very dynamic and it supports any kind of workflow that you give it i'm adding this workflow now you can see this is this uh, orange dot which means pending which means the checks were pending and green dot now it is green so it, you should see green here as well so that's done so i'm setting up this this workflow where i'm locking down the branches and implementing this branch based workflow where the changes come in via pull request only how do you do that is go go to settings branches add protection rule say this is the branch i want to protect main branch require pull request i am excluding the approval code review right now for the time sake only and then i would bring in so whenever jenkins sends a status it is recorded on github side so it knows about it from the history and you can call that here and say this is the check i want to make to make sure that the check has to pass in order for me to allow you to merge when you raise a pull request that is so we'll see this where it comes and then uh, i am going to say do not bypass for about setting even for me the admin create now what happens is i can't check in the changes to the master branch directly even if i want to i want to make changes here i cannot if i try to edit it you will see that it doesn't allow me to commit to master it enforces me to create a branch like this right that's what you'll have to do now so what do i want to do next is i want to integrate this with docker so i will create a new branch for that I'll start typing a branch name here docker integration create a branch okay so whatever i changes uh, i want to make i'll make it to the branch now what changes do i want to make next thing that i want to do is integrate this workflow with the uh, docker as in these jobs we have agent is any it is running on jenkins server itself right now instead of that i want to integrate with docker in two stages first stage instead of this and setting up the nodes and so on uh, what happens right now is for every job i'll have to add some global tool configuration for some tools like golang and so on if the global tools are not there i'll have to install the go compiler and all the tools and environment everywhere i want to run this job on that gets too daunting so instead of this a uh, easy way we can uh, import it to a docker based environment so that the docker based environment we control it with our own image and then we can define and create our own images which are custom and then it works consistently everywhere on jenkins on my local environment it works the same way so that's what i want to do so initially i just want to run these jobs with docker as an agent that's my first configuration i already have this setup right so when i showed you that environment i told you that this environment contains jenkins and a docker server already been set up for us so it is very easy to just work with it and then what do we want to do here is integrate in a way that we start using this and whenever we run the jobs the jenkins server will connect with this docker instance right and we will define an agent for every stage and for the jobs it will connect to docker and then it will start running from there right so it will basically be like that so how do we go about <coughs> configuring that and then also i want to add docker build and publish so that i have a docker file already right here i can build an image locally and publish it but I, why not automate that process from jenkins itself let jenkins build and publish the image for us that's what we want to do that's the stage we want to add that's the second phase i want to do so i'll do it in two stages first i'll configure the, the docker based agent first and then i'll start using uh, you know adding this particular job so it becomes a two stage process two step process i'll just check what kind of environment that i'm using to build this with so i'll just use the same image 
when I'm running Maven compile package from Jenkins as well. So how do I do it? Uh, I want to change or switch my agents from currently being any global agent to Docker based agent, which is available in every single stage. That is easy because I can make the change from here. Yeah. Pick one of the, uh, I have it already for the branch. So you can see that as soon as, as soon as I create the branch, it has created a pipeline for that branch as well. You can also see it from the classic version of Jenkins. So for every single branch that you have a Jenkins file for, it will detect it dynamically and it will create a pipeline like this for that branch automatically. That's happening. So I go here and start making changes. What change do I want to make? I want to switch the agent configuration. So edit, start changing. So if I want to provide configuration for every stage, like build and test and package, I'll have to set the global configuration to none. That's the only way it works per stage configuration. And for every stage, there is a setting in the bottom here, bottom right, where the agent configuration is. We didn't have any. I'm switching the configuration to Docker with the image. And I do that for every single stage that I have here. Okay, so that's one. And then I also want to create a Docker build and publish job. In fact, I can run it in parallel to this packaging job. While this jar file is being built after building and testing, after compiling and testing, I can run these in parallel. So I'll call it as voting image build and publish BNP. Now here I'll have to write a groovy script or add a groovy script like this. So you have a documentation available. Generally, this is available in our lab guides also. So it will be like this. So you see Docker with registry is where I provide the credential and you write a code like this Docker image. So Docker build is equivalent to Docker image build with Docker image build. You typically provide these commands, right? So typically if you want to build an image, you would say uh, Docker image build hyphen T your, this is my account on Docker hub. Let's say voting as a service V1 and then the path to the Docker file. This gets converted into groovy code like this Docker build the username, the tag, and then the path here. And the tag I'm generating using a git commit hash. That's why I have this code, which picks it up from an environment variable. And this uh, just picks up the first seven uh, bits. So basically, whatever you see here, this is my commit hash, right? First seven, only seven, this much. So every time I have a unique commit ID, my image will be tagged with the same commit ID. That's the idea. That way we can generate unique image tags every time. That's uh, what this code uh, is going to do. And then it will, will push it and it will tag it as latest. It will tag it as dev. So all of that is happening here and it will publish it to the registry. So I'll provide the credentials for the registry called as Docker login. I'll show you how to add the credentials also. So copy over the code and run it from here. This one I'm running as uh, from Jenkins server itself. That's where it has to be run from. And then in the steps, I would have to make some changes. So I'm adding a step where I say run a arbitrary pipeline script because this is a groovy code. So that's why arbitrary pipeline script and with Docker registry, Docker login is the credential that it is going to reference. I'll keep that as is. this is all same. This is where I'll have to make changes. So this is my tag. So my user ID, what is my repository? So voting 
tag will be generated automatically. This path is where my Docker file is. Inside my root, inside this directory is where the Docker file is. So I'm providing that as a build context here called as voting. Seems good to me. And I have switched to Docker based agent and it is also going to build uh, and publish the image. So let me save. And let it do the job. It's committed here. So if you look at the code now, uh, you are going to see a lot of changes. This branch called as Docker is where I'm making all these changes so that my mainline is stable. Mainline has not changed at all. So if something goes wrong, I can just throw away this branch and go back to the mainline as well. You see, it has started uh, uh, doing this now. So agent is set to none here. There is a agent for every stage and we have this Docker build and publish. So our pipeline is being edited right from the UI. That's the good part about it. There's something wrong here. Now I have to figure out what build has failed. So I'm just going to check what uh, is wrong here. So it is basically I have to check the image that I'm using. I'll check that first and see if it is correct. My setting, my agent is this. It should be fine. I'm just gonna check. Should actually run with that. Let's try with one more image. Shouldn't be a problem really, but I'm gonna try it anyways. Uh, Eclipse Tamarin, this is the open JDK implementation. 3.9.6 is the exact version of Maven. It uses JDK 17, so should uh, not be a problem if I use this. This is set to none. This is set to Docker and just trying to switch the image, nothing else really. Clean test, MVN, compile, this is fine. It should run from this directory, that's... Uh... Okay, this is something we might have to look at. All right, any steps are these, let me save. And let's give it a try. It should trigger in a moment. Yeah, I think it was a problem with the image. The image that I had used was slightly different environment maybe. So uh, it did work. So Maven compile, if this goes fine, um, I'm pretty confident that rest of the steps will work too, including the test phase right now. And then it is running the package and then there is a image build and publish job as well. Now this has failed. 
this is a solvable problem. So it says that no credentials matching Docker login. That's because if you look at the code, it requires the credentials to connect to the registry. And only then this block will work. So where do you add the credentials for the registry? With this name Docker login is Jenkins uh, credential store. Jenkins has a credential store. You can add the credentials to that. So I get go to manage Jenkins, go to credentials here and the global credential where I add my credential here. Same as uh, GitHub credential that I added earlier. The only thing is here, just like GitHub, I will use a token instead of a password. From where? From my registry. So I go to the registry that is Docker Hub and from here I'll generate a token. So it is better to use a token than your password always. You can also control the token, the permissions, specific authorizations. You can also define the time uh, expiry date for that token and so on. So that's much easier to manage. So from security, access token, and I don't need a delete access as well. So I'll be very specific and say read write because it has to write to the repository when it creates the token. And the token is what I copy, paste here. It will be Docker login. This is important. This is what we are referring to Docker login here. This is referencing this one, Docker login. Yeah. Now that this exists, I can re-trigger this one. Start it again. You can see it start with the build. Then the test, when it comes to the package, it's going to unfold the stages because it has not been run successfully once. All right. So if you have questions, start putting them in as well. Uh, Cedric, possibly because of the version of Docker and Docker Compose that you're using, uh, that's probably it. So config options, volumes, it should support it really. So just check your version of Docker and Docker Compose as well. Okay. Now you see it is building the image. You see here, it's building the image. How interesting is that? So from Jenkins, it will not only build the image, it will automatically tag it, tag it also with the commit history. So you see here, it has started building the pipeline. I don't even have to go outside of uh, my Git to see what's going on. Right here, I see that it is uh, running a pipeline. Yeah, uh, I see that this has failed. The previous one has failed. So, you know, you can see the history of what the changes, get the feedback right here. That's what we creating this pipeline for, right? Uh, and it is running that pipeline. You can see that. And this is going to uh, create the image and it is going to publish it to the registry with the tag from the git commit history. So C5, C585 ending 86 is going to be my container image tag as well. You're going to see it here somewhere. So it has created that same tag, published it, and it also published it as latest and dev because that's what I have in the code. The code says so. And that's the reason why if I go back to Docker Hub now, look at my profile, I should see the image published just a few seconds ago. It's all done. So you see an image out here, published as latest, published as dev. This is up to you, what you add here as an alias or a tag. That's absolutely up to you, right? And that's how you create the modern pipelines which are integrated with GitHub. You can see that in the commit history, it's all there. Uh, it is integrated with, um, let's say Jenkins. It is integrated with Docker Hub and uh, all of that. And you can see it's part of uh, our Docker 
branch this is what it's doing latest and dev now i want to make a couple of changes to this one is or to two jobs rather so these packet jobs you don't need to run them for every single branch you just want them to run on main branch not on every branch how do you make that happen right that's what we want to ensure so for the branches we just want to run build and test whether the build happens or not whether the unit test pass or not that's all we want to check only when it gets goes to the main line we want to trigger the entire pipeline with packet jobs as well this you can do easily just that you can't i have not found a way to add this conditional statement using let's say when condition or so let's see if it is there now so i want to run this job conditionally is there is it there in the settings uh, i don't see it yet it just as the agent configuration and this environment and so on so this is not what we are looking for we want to run this conditionally these two stages so for that there is a when directive like this very easy you just have when for based on many different things in this case i just want to say when branch is equal to main something like this so where do i add it is <coughs> go to my stage for packaging this is where my packaging stage is this is where my steps are i can add it anywhere here and say when should i run it run it only when the branch name is main as simple as that now i want to do the same for this job as well only when branch name is main yeah only when a branch name is a specific name so in this case main because we are using main and uh, uh, that's a trunk or uh, the main line of the code now we'll see what happens when it triggers again okay. i can go here and uh, make it happen as well i can wait for a minute or i can just say scan repository now you can look at the logs detected it it should have triggered the build for that uh, branch let's see if it has uh it failed let's see why must have been some syntax session of syntactical error line number 38 so somewhere here okay i'm just going to check the previous uh, uh, the diff and see what i have changed uh, because that's the only thing that can, could have incorporated some error so it worked here it did not work here so what did we change and where is the question now 42 and 55 so <coughs> I think only those two changes are there, nothing else. Yeah, so nothing else I need to worry about. I think uh, it's about where where I made the changes. That's probably the issue. The stage has steps. Okay, where did I change it? Uh, no, this is not the one. It's my parallel stage. And then it's running this particular stage with the agent configuration. Okay, I think I should have added it outside of agent configuration. Yeah, that's right. And uh, here it should be just fine. It 
trigger again. Let's see what happens now. Shiva has a question about uh, uh, build tools. So build tools, no, because uh, we don't have to dive too deep into the build tools. It's mostly about how do we install a package like uh, Java application versus Node.js. If you understand it once, that's uh, probably it. It's not worth a complete course to get into the build tools really. So because there are tools like NPM and Python and uh, like pip install and NPM install and so on and Maven install. So once you have built it, a particular type of an application, you'll get familiar with it. There's not too much uh, of it really. And you can see this has skipped over the jobs here, uh, these particular stages. And I have a working pipeline for, let's say, this Java application. At this stage, I can, I've tested enough, and I also want to test whether this runs on main or not. So I can bring the changes into the main line. This is what I'm going to do by raising a pull request. I'll bring the changes here. All this commit history will get merged into the main line now. So this is where I raise a pull request. And this is where you'll see all those uh, best practices also like code reviews. And you know you can see all the changes which are going in now, right? So we added, uh, uh, let's say, we can say Docker-based. We can be more elaborate here, you know, but I'm just being very brief for the time being and uh, pull request for the brevity sake. And you can see that it basically looks up or it waits for the uh, CI approval from uh, the continuous integration and so on, right? So it will look up for continuous integration pipelines and only then will it allow you to merge and all of that. And this can be as part of your, uh, this is not actually, I merged it against a different repository. I should have merged it against or raised the pull request against my own repository. Okay, so between my own branches of the same repository is where I want to run, raise the pull request. Okay, and it will check for the CI pipeline as well. And not only that, it would trigger a build for a pull request as well. Since there is a pull request, the next time it scans, you are going to see a CI pipeline trigger for the pull request as well right here. Because there is one. A pull request can come from an external repository as well. Yeah, that's the reason why there are different jobs for a pull request for the branches and so on. <clears throat> so you see it has triggered one and it starts waiting for that to, or at least looking up for that as well. You can also enforce this saying that, oh, this has to pass as well, the pull request check. So instead of just saying branch or in addition to that, so I can remove this one and say, I want to wait for the pull request check. Yeah. And then it would. So the pull request will only open up for merging when the checks have passed here. So that's what happens. Otherwise, it will be in a locked state. I'm allowing the merge now. <coughs> And then I would just uh, delete that branch called as Docker, which I uh, don't need. So I can delete the branch as well called as Docker because all the changes have gone into the main line now. Just deleted that branch to clean up. Yeah. Now, for me, uh, I'll wait for the main line, and uh, the and what you're gonna notice is since I've deleted that branch Docker the pipeline will get cleaned up automatically. It'll only keep the main line. Everything else, it will just clean up. See, it's gone. So it's very dynamic. So when you do not have the branches, it will not have the pipeline as well. The moment you create a branch, 
pipeline gets created and executed for that branch as well, right? So it's very, very dynamic and it supports the workflows that you have. So no matter how many branches you create, you don't have to worry about creating the pipeline, cleaning the pipeline up from Jenkins. It just happens automatically. <clears throat> That's the magic. So Shiva has a question, will it trigger for any file? Right now, yes, any changes in this repository it will trigger that. You can control it, of course. So for example, you want to run these jobs only if the code in voting directory gets updated. You can do that by using change set. So there is a concept of change set, a conditional of sorts. You can see that. So when uh, itself, there's a change set and you can have a conditional saying that only if uh, code in this directory or code uh, only if JavaScript files change. So you can find when the job gets triggered based on the change set. That's very much possible. You can add that. Okay. <clears throat> now I want to add jobs for the Node.js. I'll be very quick with this now. I already have the application. There is a Docker file for this application. I'll just take the same image and create the jobs. I'll create three jobs, one to build, one to run the test, third one just to build a container image and publish it. Simple. I'll just add three jobs here. It's very simple. So I start editing a mainline uh, code here. And then I would say this is for my application called as front end. I want to build it. I will use Docker agent. So this, this image, what are my steps? It is from a subdirectory. Again, we have to run everything from a subdirectory called as front end now. So when you have a mono repo, that's something you have to keep in mind. Change the directory to front end add a step called as npm install. Simple, simple for the test job. It's a repeat process for the test job. You have to run npm install along with npm test. It's a new environment, so that's mandatory. And then uh, the agent configuration has to match this. Then comes the front end image build and publish. This is where I build that Docker image runs from Jenkins, so agent is set to any. It's not using agent because you can't build a container image from inside container. Uh, so you have to be outside. So from Jenkins, that's why this configuration. <coughs> and the step has to be exactly similar to this. Run arbitrary script. So that I can add my groovy script where I say, oh, take the commit hash, build the image. This time it would be front end, same tag, no problems because all the tags match our commit ID, the commit hash. Uh, that's a good way of generating unique uh, identifiers. And you can say whatever you want, tags, latest dev or whatever you want and save. And now I have the jobs for Yeah, and I can't commit to main, so I have to create a branch. I'll call it as front end uh, CI or just front end. That's it. Let's give it a go. This is how you build the modern pipelines and for multiple applications. And then you can keep on iterating over it. You can do more cool stuff. 
you can add more conditionals you can add chain sets you can add more applications you can run things in parallel more things in parallel wherever possible can't do it always but wherever possible so you can do keep on adding iterating over this pipeline but this is the foundation of generating creating modern pipelines with jenkins using declarative code that's what you have here so if i go to this branch you see it's a declarative code and it's not like you're writing everything from scratch that's the best part right i have a file with 135 lines i don't have to write everything uh, that's the beauty because you have ui this allows you to edit it very nicely especially something like parallel jobs for example it's a bit tough to uh, add it by yourself and all that so uh, it makes it easy super easy right there are only few things where you would have to go to the code and add it conditionals for example that you'll have to add that's when you saw me making a mistake right and that's where human errors come in right so whatever is possible uh, we use ui and wherever not we'll just have to figure things out and get it to work simple and now it is uh, running npm test you can see that it's running the tests unit test here yeah just like database you're right uh, <coughs> oh that's a question for me uh, is it applicable for backend depends uh, backend generally you don't have a ci pipelines for it you may have additional steps like you may want to run uh, let's say something like um, you have uh, schema updates and stuff as part of your deployment and so on you can automate that process from jenkins and so on depending on what you have right now it fails here because one of the unit tests fail so you see it has this tests and one of the validation assertion has failed saying that uh, it was looking for a specific thing service status section and that has failed one test has failed and that's why we have this because if the tests fail we should detect it and that's where our pipeline should fail that's the whole purpose of it right now i'm going to just check that test and see if i can fix the issue or fix the test and in this case the front end uh, is where it has failed let's fix it here you see it has failed and uh, why it fails is because in the front end application there are unit tests one of the assertions and unit test here says service status should exist like this and this so it's just checking for some strings if you look at the application it's front end looks like this kind of a page this is like bare bone thing so it finds certain things but it does not find the actual status message right it's looking for a string called as <coughs> service status it doesn't exist so maybe when I initially created it, it was there or I changed it later to this. So, or maybe I call it as a backend services now. So I'm going to change it to system information instead for looking, looking for that. So my test seems to be wrong in this case. It's trying to find something which doesn't exist. I'll give you something which it can test with and work. So either you'll have to fix the code or you'll have to fix the test based on what is wrong. In this case, the test seems to be like not very correct. So I fixed it and then it will shall uh, rerun. And that's probably should be our last run because that should go through. After that comes the uh, image build and publish. And I don't really see uh, a problem there. Right, that's pretty much it that I wanted to share. Um, and we will see this execute and uh, wrap up after that. Any questions that you have for me? <coughs> By the way, those of you who want to get started with their journey, DevOps journey, and do that with our membership, uh, we have a special offer on the membership that I generally float during these live sessions and it gives you access to all the courses, all the DevOps courses and not only that, 
a step by step learning process so uh, you can set your goals you can set uh, and take the challenges to reach that goal and we make it interesting it's not just about courses so there are challenges there are these live sessions there are projects there are quizzes and tests involved and uh, gives you a complete kind of a holistic uh, learning solution uh, to get there right and if you are interested you can uh, take the offer that i'm going to float here for the next 15 minutes it's going to give you this entire nerd package for about 9999 you can go and check the pricing the retail pricing is uh, 14999 we uh, keep on of having some offers so right now uh, it will read as uh, 11999 and if you take it now in the next 15 minutes it would be 9999 for for one year right and then it gives you access to the geek membership as well so it's a combined offer so you get nerd you get geek package that gives you the uh, ultimate devops bootcamp jenkins git aws and docker and courses and then there are more courses here a lot more courses here so that entire package is what we are offering for 9999 if you take it in the next 15 minutes using the offer or the deal that you see on the screen coming back to the pipeline this is success. This has gone successful. So perfect. So that's what we wanted, right? So we started with the vote uh, build. We initially created a simple pipeline. We converted into a Docker based integration and uh, we're, us uh, we're using Docker. So you can see that it's using Docker. So all the jobs are also running as containers within the containers. And then we are ultimately building the image and publishing it. And we're doing that for the front end application as well now. So it's doing the same thing for the front end created the image, publish it to the registry. Uh, so if I refresh this, come back here, I'm going to see it has built an image for voting and now front end just a minute ago. With the correct tags. So tags, aliases, everything has been updated. And this is uh, how you build a continuous integration pipeline using the modern technologies and the tools. Cool. So, uh, any other questions? Perfect. So, Keshav says uh, we use similar application for build, release, and regression. Absolutely. So, that's probably how, how uh, we do things today. And as part of the project, uh, as part of this week's mission, right, you complete the Jenkins course, parts of it, it's all there. <coughs> In fact, as part of the last week's mission itself, I had asked you to prepare for Jenkins, right? So in part of Gitify itself, I've added a couple of lessons, a couple of modules that you should complete on Jenkins. And uh, yeah, there was this particular module to create the manual pipelines and stuff, right? So that entire module you're supposed to complete. And then you'll add two more uh, modules that you'll complete pipeline as a code or rest of the modules actually which gives you everything like whatever I've shown you right now is a very quick overview of things. If you want to dive deeper, do it with labs and project, follow a structured path. That's when the course can be useful. If you can follow this pace and understand everything, no problems. You try it. Otherwise, you can take it at uh, step by step as a step by step learning approach and you can go through that course and then you complete it. So that's what you will do if you become a member here right or if you're a member that's a structured approach you'll follow so you have everything that you need to get here and do the complete learning get a better understanding of it as well and at the end of it you'll probably have an even more sophisticated pipeline because we'll add jobs for two more applications that would be the catalog which is a python app so it'll have three more stages and then Golang app, maybe three or four stages like this recommendation engine that is. And uh, that's what you're supposed to do as part of this uh, uh, week's work, right? Learn about Jenkins pipeline, complete this, and then add two more as exercises. All right. So Krishna has a question is uh, uh, to check back on the video for reference and practice. Will the video recording be available on the platform and YouTube? Yes. So definitely subscribe to the YouTube channel, School of DevOps. If you haven't already, let me share that with you. You will get the recording in a day or two 
on the channel itself there is a playlist by name 90 day devops challenge and this will give you access to all the all okay yeah this gives you access to all the sessions so we already have session number one to three the master class is one to three on docker in the essentials uh, image building gitofy and uh, today we talked about pipeline it that's about building ci pipelines so you're going to have access to all of that on the youtube channel do subscribe to it do share this with as many people as you think will benefit out of uh, these kind of sessions as well all right so uh, if there are no further questions and we are right on time uh, we will conclude the session here so thank you very much for attending today's last live master class and i hope this was useful for you next week we will come back and start talking about cloud get started with aws essentials and learn how to build an infrastructure on cloud um, using you know like specifically with aws and look at the fundamentals of that we'll with a probably slightly different use case as well we'll digress uh, there for a for, for a while for uh, cloud and for terraform those will be related stuff right so that's what we're gonna do next week so next week we'll talk about cloud so thank you very much i'll see you next week with yet another session bye well i hope you enjoyed that session and to join more such sessions definitely consider being a member of school of devops and do like share subscribe uh, and you can have a look at the video out here uh, to know about either the previous mission that is about uh, Git or the next mission that is about the cloud. So do watch these live streams to know more and to you know continue your journey with DevOps. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another one.